Hello and welcome to a video on pond heating. So, you might have seen this pond from one of my previous videos where I just built it basically. And it's been running about four weeks, five weeks, something like that now. And you can see all the fish are all sat in this corner pretty upset with themselves. And that's because this pond is currently five degrees Celsius. Last week we had a bit of a cold spell and it actually dropped to two degrees Celsius. So, really cold. Obviously that's something to do with this uh, waterfall that's going up here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to divert that waterfall and turn that one off there because that one doesn't need to be running. And we're going to put a heater on the pond just to keep it about 8 degrees Celsius. And I'll show you the heater. So we haven't done any plumbing yet. There's the heater. It's a Duratec 14 Plus air source heat pump. Similar to mine, but mine's a 7 Plus. So it's just bigger for a bigger pond. And it should keep this pond quite nicely at 8 degrees through the winter. So there's been a few, there'll be a few changes. What this, uh, what is used to be the overflow just here is now going to be the inlet for the heater. The heater is going to have its own 5,000 litre an hour pump that's going to run off of the drum, so it's going to go drum, heater, pond and uh, be completely independent from the systems that's currently running, the waterfall system and the uh, main pond system. Uh, so it should be pretty good. I'm going to take this overflow here and put it on this tank so we still have an overflow. But this wasn't wired to take a heater, so the wiring's only really for these plugs. So what I've done is I've put in a consumer unit, and we're going to have heater, um, pumps, and all your plugs in here, and then your lighting. So we're going to be a little bit more capable with wiring. So yeah, that's how we're getting on with it. And now I'm going to sort of mount this SOC pump to the floor and drill some holes through here so that we can get power work to it. So we've made some little stands for the heater to sit on so it's well off at ground. I like to do that because the drip water and then you don't want it sat in a puddle because it will actually freeze that puddle up. So that's that. The little concrete down. It's got its little rubber feet that come with them and I've just drilled holes in so that can be bolted to these blocks. But for now I've just popped it on there so I can get my height to where I need to drill the uh, holes for the pipes because obviously you've got your inch and a half outlet there and your inlet there and then you want to go straight through there so now I need to take this off and drill straight through the wall so let's go with it so we've got the heater in place and plumbed up so at the back here I've put a two inch outlet and an inch and a half inlet because the pump is inch and a half so it's got an inch and a half inlet and uh, I've insulated them as you can see so no frost can get to them pipes it's got a main isolator switch there and it goes straight into the unit and I've set the unit at about 8 degrees, it's currently 8.5 so that's where it turns off at 8.5 and, and it's turned off last night I turned it on for the first time and I sort of just left it running, it was 6, six degrees when I turned it on no it weren't, it was 5 degrees when I turned it on and it quickly got to 6 degrees and now it's 8. In fact, one thing that was quite interesting is, you see in the beginning of this video when I started the fish were all in that corner over there and uh, they were all like sat on bottom, they literally sat on bottom for like 2 days not moved at all as soon as the heater came on, and dis despite it still being 5 degrees, as soon as the heater came on they, did, they picked up that there were a warm current in the water and they all started moving around and now they all sort of congregate underneath the heater's inlet which is that thing there although the heater's not on at the minute so I don't know what they'd be getting out in it but definitely last night when the heater were on for the first time they were all around here where I imagine most heat were because the water comes out of that, it's on a 5,000 litre an hour pump, goes straight down 
but there is two holes there which is the pump so the pump the main pump for the pond will push it round here but it probably still will be warmer in this area and that's where all the fish are so did a really good job of heating it last night I'm kind of surprised it's turned off it's not particularly cold this morning though but um, yeah the fish seem a lot happier they're a lot more moving they're all swimming about they keep coming and looking at us at window so what temperatures do we actually plan to heat with this pond so it's currently set to 8 degrees the reasoning behind that is 8 degrees is a pretty stable temperature for koi uh, any colder than that and they start to go a bit lethargic and just sit on bottom any warmer than that and you get yourself into the position where between 8 and 12 degrees the koi don't have very much of an immune system but parasites can start to wake up so between 8 and 12 degrees you'll get bacterial issues and parasites waking up and uh, the koi cannot do anything against it so you really don't want to let them stay in that temperature for very long so we've chose to keep it from dropping below 8 degrees and then in spring when the pond probably say comes up to 10 degrees it might be a good idea to set it to 12 so it jumps that gap a little bit faster than it normally would and gets your uh, koi a bit more active and that's obviously the advantage of the heater it won't cost a lot to run to keep this pond at 8 degrees it'll literally be on a frosty night when uh, it drops into minus temperatures the heater will probably come on and uh, keep the pond's temperature sustained at that 8 and what I'm going to do now is divert this um, so that it's not radiating a load of heat so what I'm going to do is have a little pipe that runs down here into the pond that diverts the uh, waterfall to keep as much heat in as possible. So let's actually have a look at this heater running. So it's currently eight and a half degrees. Let's turn the heat into nine degrees and that'll cause it to come on. And uh, actually while we're waiting for it to come on I'll talk about wiring it up. So this heater actually uses about 2.3 kilowatts when it's running which a lot of people are going to say you could just plug that in I know I can see that coming in the comments and uh, you could plug 2.3 kilowatts in you know any heat is 2 kilowatts problem is is compressors and all these fans and motors have a really high starting current it's rated at a max current to 13 amps so I thought what I'll do is I'll put a 16 amp fuse on it I put a 16 amp fuse on it and it tripped it instantly so let's have a look in here so I put a 16 amp on, the first one here is the uh, inlet and it just tripped it instantly. I've now put a 20 amp on and that seems to do the trick, seems to be fine. So it wants at least a 20 amp breaker on this one. So you can't plug it in really, that's unreasonable. And uh, it's, I've noticed it's a bit quieter than mine. It seems you know pretty quiet running, mine seems to vibrate a lot more than this one does. Maybe it's because it's a bigger unit, it's got more insulation or something in it. But uh, there we go, that was the compressor starting up. So it's now fully running and uh, heating the pond. And you can see the dial on the gauge just creeps up. This is the pressure in the compressor unit. So it just creeps up, it's usually somewhere around here. It just creeps up with pressure on. And that's how you tell it's running properly. So there you go, that's the uh, heater in working order. What we're going to do now is make a nice little cover for it. And uh, I'll see you in a minute. Right then, so that's the cover put over the heater. Should keep snow and rain off it. And uh, it just helps it not get all covered in ice if it's working when it's raining and stuff. That's why I like to put covers on them. So that's that bit done. I've also been messing about with the uh, waterfall. So the waterfall's actually on at this minute, but the waterfall can divert to that part there which the camera focuses Doesn't wanna. is uh, uh, a winter thing so that pipe will just be there in winter hence it being a flexible pipe and then in uh, summer you can just move it out at road in fact we're going to have a look at the top of the hill so yeah, at the top 
So what I've done here is I've put a T in this pipe and let it down there and then all you have to do is come around here like so open this valve like that and then that goes down there and then under there but it runs down you can't really see it to the uh, thing and completely diverts the waterfall which is slowing down and uh, what I've done is I've insulated this pipe here because it were exposed and I've also put some insulation you can see it at the bottom but I've put some insulation around these tanks just to keep that wind chill factor off them it'll help them a lot so really any exposed pipe work has been uh, insulated and then uh, as you can see we're going to go down here you can see that that pipe is kicking out some water now and then the waterfall hasn't stopped yet but it's definitely slowing down so there we go that's it, it's a really good shot at pond from up here I need to get that air stone working it's uh, leaking I'll sort that in a second there we go some nice fish so everything's running now, this is the pump, 5000 litre, goes straight through there to the heater and then return from the heater goes up here, up there and then in through the wall right there and uh, that's that, the, obviously the uh, main pump goes down here and through there and also splits into that little bit and uh, the water feature pump is up there and goes up there, what I've done here is I've uh, Put the T junction on that line so it goes down there to that pump and the back there, and then before it goes to the water waterfall pump right there. And then that one there's the main uh, pumped line which is down there. All this water on the floors because I've been spilling it everywhere. Then I've put the uh, overflow in this tank here. So if we're looking here, there's now a little overflow just there. So if the water will get to our it overflows down there and then uh, down the soak away so it's all pretty good one thing a, a bit of an update on it as well this outlet here was getting blocked with leaves because the outlet used to come down here and convert to inch and a half and it was getting blocked with leaves so what I've done is I've put it down here so you can get the leaves out in this little bucket then it converts to inch and a half and goes down there and uh, that should stop that obviously I didn't really think about that because my drums don't have a problem with leaves being indoors uh, so that's it. And then you can you can see the uh, overflow goes straight down there and then straight through the wall. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, then please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, then please comment them below. If you want to see a video on this drum filter, then please click right here. If you want to uh, see another video on this pond, then please click here. And I shall see you. Thanks for